G'day Ice Cream Lovers, my name's Steve Christensen. Welcome to this session of Scoop School. I can't tell you how nice it is to have you here. Now, although you may not be with us here in person down here in St. Louis, Missouri, we do appreciate you dropping in. Uh, why don't you just hit the subscribe button, hit like. Well, don't hit like yet. Wait till the end of the video, and if you like it, then hit like. Our uh, episode sponsor this episode is Slices Concession. Uh, look, they've got two locations, one East Coast, one West Coast. Whether you talk to Evan or whether you talk to Chino, they'll talk to you about a huge range of equipment that is new, near new, uh, good guys. Slicesconcession.com. The link is right down here. Give it a click. Now, I do want to talk to you today a little bit about the difference between a vertical barrel and a horizontal barrel. We get a lot of questions about this. And look, to tell you the truth, if you were to come down here and do a scoop school class, uh, generally one of the first questions is okay, out of all of this equipment, Steve, which is your favorite? It's almost like having your favorite child. You don't have your favorite child. And in fact, all of my children are lined up here behind the camera waiting to see who it is. And I'm going to uh, not give them a spoiler because, well, we all love our different pieces of equipment. We love our children. But I do want to talk a little bit about functionality between a vertical batch freezer and a horizontal. Um, and it really all comes down to features and benefits. One is not better than the other, they're just different, kind of like your kids. One's not better than the other, they're just different. So we're going to, need to uh, have a look today at these two units. This is a uh, 20 quart electrofreeze unit, which is a horizontally oriented barrel. This is the Stolting VB60. Again, another 20 quart barrel. It's situated uh, vertically. So what are the differences? What are the pros and cons? Uh, what are the featureities? Featureities? What's the functionality and features from these two units? So let's start from just the optics, if you will. You can kind of see, even though they're the same size barrel, the vertical barrel unit is a little bit smaller because it's vertically oriented. It's got the motor or the gear drive right underneath. Whereas you do need a little bit more depth on the horizontal because generally most horizontal batch freezers, uh, the dasher goes into the barrel uh, and then you need to have a belt or pulley system in the back. So it kind of makes it a little bit longer. Now, there are different, obviously, manufacturers of verticals and horizontals. So, you know, you need to speak to the particular uh, uh, manufacturers as to, you know, exactly dimensions and so forth. But typically, you'll find that most vertical batch freezers are a little bit smaller in their footprint. Now, that's the upside. Maybe one of the challenges is that because it's, uh, you're loading it from the top here, the extraction chute is way down the bottom. Uh, and so you do need to bend over a little bit further to extract your product out of a batch freezer that may be smaller situated versus uh, something that's sitting up a little bit higher. You can kind of see here the pros and cons. A little bit more easier to pour my mix in in this here. I've got a little bit more height over here on my horizontal, but over here uh, my uh, extraction chute or my extraction port is a little bit lower, whereas here we're a little bit higher. And again, I've seen different uh, ice cream operators put their batch freezers on stands to kind of get some sort of leverage as to the kind of usability of them. That's kind of a, the, the, the outset is kind of the size and the orientation and perhaps some of the convenience in uh, working with them. Uh, the second would be obviously the optics of them. So a vertical batch freezer, uh, you can kind of see what what's going on, and there's a few different manufacturers of vertical batch freezers. Catabriga is a very visual machine, uh, sold in the US by Advanced Gourmet. A Stolting, obviously, is a very visual machine. It's got a clear plastic lid on it, so you can actually make ice cream. I've seen some people have chef's mirrors uh, above their batch freezer, so people can actually watch the process of you churning fresh ice cream, which is pretty cool. Uh, again, the optics on a, ver on a a horizontal batch freezer aren't as uh, good, uh, but again, it's just pros and cons. So let's talk a little bit about the functionality and what you'll actually be doing, using, and so forth. On 
on a horizontal batch freezer, obviously we have a front door here. The, um, the dasher is horizontally aspected or the ratio is horizontal, which means you do need a rear gasket on the back of that dasher. That's not unusual. Most of the equipment we have down the line here has some form of rear gasket. Uh, when you're working with a horizontal, or I should say a vertical batch freezer, there's no rear gasket because you're putting the dasher right down into uh, generally what is a stainless steel pot, if you will. Uh, so what you've got here is a, an O-ring or a bushing that goes on the back, it goes in and then closes. Here, with the Stolting or any other kind of vertical barrel, you're putting the dasher in vertically. Uh, again, not too much of a difference, but typically there's no bottom bushing or seal in a vertical because um, because you don't have a, a, a drive shaft that goes through the barrel, if that makes sense. So again, a little bit of pros and cons. Let's talk a little bit about the dasher process because here we have a situation and I've got, I have a smaller Emery Thompson machine over here, the little four quart, two quart one. Um, and these are the dashes and the barrels from that. When you've got a horizontal barrel that's situated like this and your mix comes in here, your dasher turns like this uh, and you're actually basically churning ice cream uh, and having it fold in on itself and this is probably one of the big differences between the two is that as this dasher turns in the horizontal and we can see that over here as this dasher turns it's basically uh, folding the ice cream in and on top of itself so what that means is typically a horizontal um, uh, uh, dasher or a horizontal batch freezer will probably give you a little more overrun than a dasher that's spinning vertically. Because what we're doing here is we're not folding per se, we're just kind of stirring. So if we have a look at the process of how this unit runs, it basically just rotates and turns. If I can uh, turn the unit on and just hit the dasher here, you can see how it just basically spins. Uh, and so when you're in the process of um, making ice cream, it's stirring and freezing rather than folding and freezing. Now most of, if not all of the vertical batch freezer manufacturers are Italian. Uh, and that might be the reason why, is because your uh, European style frozen desserts, your gelatos and so forth, are typically a little bit lower in overrun. So they don't need that high overrun like uh, American ice cream is and other ice creams are in other parts of the world. Um, so they don't mind having that process of a stirring low overrun, or not say low, but lower overrun, uh, than you would from a folding higher overrun. Now again, obviously, a lot of these batch freezers have some functionality where you can actually change the dasher speed. I know the Emery Thompson has that, the, uh, um, what's this? Electrofreeze has that as well as the Carpagiani. Um, so again, that's something a little bit different. You'll get tend to get a little bit less overrun, maybe by about 5% than you will out of a horizontal. Now, another thing to be aware of, and we've put these units together here, um, when you're sanitizing, uh, you will need to make sure, and again, uh, the goal is when you're sanitizing these batch freezers to make sure that everything uh, is being touched by or at least immersed uh, and touched by the sanitizer liquid. So if I pour this sanitizer into the unit, and you can see that pouring in, and if I turn the dasher on, you can kind of see in there as this dasher rotates that you can see that liquid, that sanitizer, basically coating everything as it turns. Now again, we've got two seals here on the front door of the unit. We've actually got the seal around the door and the seal around the front gate. So that's one extra seal that you have. 
to make sure that you're not getting any leaks. Now we're going to take the same process and sanitize the vertical. Get all of that out. Thank you very much. So when we do the same thing with the vertical, Freezer. Again, make sure the doors close. There's only one door uh, or one seal. And this door doesn't even have a seal. It's basically um, fine machine, so it doesn't need a seal. Um, but when I'm pouring the sanitizer in and around the vertical, you'll kind of see here that the, the actual sanitizer does not sanitize the whole barrel and just like a soft serve machine or a frozen custom machine you may need to take a barrel brush or some kind of brush and just basically wipe down and sanitize the arms of the dasher and the side walls here so that the barrel and all of its components are sanitized and then you can put that on rotate that through, it'll rotate around a little bit there. Again, you don't need to have it there in there for a certain period of time. Most health departments are quite good. Once you've reached that certain parts per million in your chlorine-based sanitizer, it can just rotate for a little bit and then we can extract out. So that's one of the differences in that you've got a situation where just a little bit more work to make sure that the sanitizer is coating everything in the vertical, whereas in the horizontal that happens kind of automatically. And then finally, I just want to talk about output and the way the dashes rotate. Because when you're dealing with a horizontal dasher, um, what ends up happening is it's rotating so that it's taking the mix from the back and pushing it towards the front of the barrel. That's why you don't need to have any extra rotation uh, when you want to extract your product out at the end because the rotation of the barrel is constantly pushing that product, folding it and pushing it towards the front of the uh, door, the front door here. You can simply open up that door and extract out. Uh, on the vertical, it's a little bit different. When you're sanitizing, when you're making ice cream, the dasher rotates clockwise and it brings the product up the barrel. Now you can't extract out here with the product going upward. So it needs downward motivation, downward force. So this particular unit has a double speed counterclockwise dasher that pushes that product down out of the extraction chute. And when you're ready to extract, you simply open the door and then Bob's your uncle, you've got a whole lot of ice cream coming out there. So is it better, is it worse? No, it's just different. Uh, and that's why when you're looking at the differences between a uh, vertical batch freezer or a horizontal batch freezer, again, one's not better than the other. You've just got to look at functionality. You'll find just as a recap here that the uh, verticals might be a little bit smaller in footprint but your extraction port's a little bit lower. You may find also that um, even though there's a lot of convenience in use here, you might need to brush uh, a little bit here to get the sanitizer through. Horizontal will give you a nice, uh, even uh, dasher speed. It'll give you a little bit more overrun. You're folding products in and churning. Uh, you don't get the visibility. Um, you know, they're just a few little bits and pieces. I'd be interested in your comments and whether you have used a horizontal or a vertical. Um, again, in the grand scheme of things, if I was trapped on a desert island and I had either a horizontal or a vertical batch freezer, I would be happy nonetheless. So, your call, uh, whether you're going vertical, whether you're going horizontal, uh, again, leave some thoughts and comments down below. We love to hear. We try and uh, get back to you every single time. Uh, even if it's just a thumbs up on the comment, that technically is that's getting back to you. So, uh, thank you again for our episode sponsor which is uh, Slices Concession. Again, the link is down below. And if you have any questions about the ice cream business, you've got questions about equipment, you've got questions about mix, about flavours, drop us a line or leave us a comment down here, info at scoopschool.com. Go to scoopschool.com. And again, I'll try and get it right again. This is the subscribe button. Down here is a pretty good video you might want to watch. And over here, come on into Scoop School. Just click it. Keep on scooping. See you in the next video. Yeah. This